Welcome back, everybody. I'm so excited right now, as you can tell, because my next guest is a NASA astronaut who is currently in space, speaking to us from the International Space Station. Please welcome Jessica Meir. Jessica, thanks so much for being here. Hello. You're very, very welcome. Thank you. This has always been on my goal. Things to do is talk to you. Well, then we're even, because my goal is to talk to you in the International Space Station, or when you come back. Either one would be great. Jessica, everyone here on Earth has had their lives disrupted by the coronavirus, but you're not on Earth. What is it like to experience the global pandemic from orbit? It has been very surreal to experience this, to watch this situation unfold on the ground of this global pandemic. And it has felt really surreal because we're up here going about our normal day. The whole issue has been pretty transparent to us because our ground teams, although of course their lives are affected, it is really a seamless transition and continuing to get our jobs done up here. We're talking to our family and friends and we're watching the news feed. So it's a little bit difficult for us to believe that we are truly going back to a different planet. And it was very strange to feel that there were three of us up here at the time. Now there are six of us again. We were really the only three humans that were not subjected to that at the, t at the current time. Billions of humans, everybody was dealing with this in some way or another, and the three of us weren't. So it was very strange to see it all unfold. A lot of people back on Earth are having trouble dealing with social isolation. I understand that astronauts are trained to deal with isolation. Do you have any advice for the people back home who maybe are getting cabin fever? Yeah, we've actually been posting some of our advice on social media. And I think some of the things that help us up here are to continue to get our daily exercise to keep to a schedule and a routine. Those things are important for both our mental and our physical well-being, to make sure that we're playing, playing nicely with others, to treat each other well, kindly, with respect, and to get along well, and, and also just to keep having a little bit of fun as well. I think that's very important for your psychological well-being. So every now and then we try to keep things light, maintain our senses of humor. All of those things really help us function together as a, as a happy team living in isolation. Now, you mentioned exercise, and uh, I, I have to ask, have you been running on the Colbert treadmill in the space station? Absolutely. I was just on the Colbert treadmill a few hours ago. There's still a picture of you on it, and we actually do that almost every day. We weight lift every day, and we either bike or run on the treadmill every day. It's very important for us to maintain our bone density and our muscle mass, so you are a regular part of our daily routine, Stephen. It is a profound honor to know that. Thank you, Jessica. Now, as you said, you, you, um, you have to be good roommates together. Um, do you have any advice on how not to annoy the people that you're trapped uh, alone with for months on end? Yeah, we even have a buzzword for that at NASA, and it's called expeditionary skills. And this is something that is very important in terms of how we select astronauts and how we train them as well. And there are a lot of key elements to that. First of all, in terms of teamwork, there's good leadership and good followership. Of course, effective communication strategies, taking care of yourself and all of your equipment and supplies. That can be quite a challenge up here when things are floating around and you're using all the surfaces around you. And also being a good team player taking care of each other. I like to think of it of all the things that parents tell their children, how to play nicely with others, or also the kind of people that I would want to go camping with. All of those features are really important. And I think it's a, it's a great thing to know that that's how we select our astronauts these days. Because we have all of these long duration missions, we actually don't just pick someone who's the top of their field or the, the ace jet pilot. If they're also not a good person and someone you like to be around, somebody that makes uh, the stay a little bit more pleasant, then you actually won't get selected to be an astronaut anymore, which makes us a, a, a better team and makes it a lot more fun here. Jessica, would you recommend space to other people? Because I've always wanted to be an astronaut and I, I gave it up to go into comedy. Uh, it's a slightly different occupation, but you know, if someone had a chance to go to space, would you say jump at it? Absolutely. We feel so fortunate to be among the few people that have been up here, and I wish that I could share it with everybody. That's one of the goals of my mission is to try and share it with as many people as possible because I think it is just so important to have this privilege to be up here, to be looking down at the planet from up here. It really does change your perspective as a human, and I think it would be very important for the rest of the human race to experience that as well. Well, I want to ask you about looking down at the planet. Um, since there's no sense of direction, do you feel like you're looking down at the Earth 
or looking up at the Earth, or are you just sort of next to the Earth? How, how, how would you explain the spatial relationship? Yeah, that's an interesting question. You are sort of just next to it because you're really, we're really not that far away. We're only 250 miles up. So it's not as if we can see the whole round planet. You know, we can only see a small portion of it. You're not always looking at it in the same orientation that they're used to. You're really kind of looking at it upside down because the bottom of the space station looking down at the Earth is this way. So you have to interpret, you know, what's up and what's down. North, south is always a little bit different. I have gotten a lot better, though, I think from when I first got here. It can be really quite confusing at first, and then you get better and better. Well, Jessica, thank you so much for talking to us. I know you're coming back uh, in two days, but uh, I would say astronauts and college seniors should maybe consider staying where they are just a little bit longer. I wish I could stay up here longer, actually. I already wanted to before the situation that was unfolding down there, but unfortunately, our mission length is determined by the lifetime of our Soyuz spacecraft, so we need to get back relatively quickly, and it'll be great to see everybody on the ground again, even if it is from a distance. Well, safe travels on your way back to the cool green hills of Earth. Jessica Mayer, everybody, from the International Space Station. We'll be right back.